This new intense series on Amazon called Expats was filmed in Hong Kong is already causing a stir. What is controversial about it? Did it make Hong Kong look bad? We're going to talk about it. So you are telling me that a director from mainland China is filming something in Hong Kong centering white and Korean people and having no main Cantonese characters. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, we got to talk about it, Andrew. A lot of controversies surrounding Amazon Prime's The Expats. It is the first time a major, major Hollywood star like Nicole Kidman, Andrew, has ever filmed something in Hong Kong. Wow. And this is the first time in a long time. So this is making a big splash. A couple controversies we're going to cover. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. But you know what is not controversial, Andrew? It's Smala. Smala sauce, but it is sold out online, so you got to get it in stores right now. Stay tuned for the restock. Um, here's the, the a couple controversies, Andrew. Okay. Expats TV show puts Hong Kong officials in an awkward position because it is seen as glamorizing the umbrella movement. Okay. So actually, Andrew, the first two episodes out of six are not available in Hong Kong, despite being filmed in Hong Kong. You know what's funny? Well, I'm not in Hong Kong, but I've seen two episodes. I've seen two episodes. Right. So, I mean, real quick, Andrew. Did I've you, watched. First of all, did you enjoy him and what's it about? No, no, no. Let's continue with the controversies. Okay, and I'll give okay. you my analysis. Lulu Wang was talking about how she can represent Hong Kong. Lulu despite, Wang, the director. Who's she's from for The Farewell, right? Mm -hmm. She basically was saying, like, I could still represent Hong Kong even though I only speak Mandarin because Cantonese is kind of dying in Hong Kong. And this made some people kind of raise a couple eyebrows too. Well, that was her reasoning. Well, she, she was said, like, I can uh, I can actually understand a lot of people in Hong Kong nowadays because a lot of people are speaking Mandarin. That is a fact. Well, she was right, but maybe the way she said yeah. it was a little bit like people being like, people were like, I don't like how you said that. I, I don't know about the tone and her intention on that. I can't speak for that, but yes, that's a fact what she said, yes. Right. Uh, Brian T., is playing Nicole Kidman's husband in the piece. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, yo, man, for Asian American sh straight male actors, these opportunities come around so seldomly. I was about to quit acting before I got this job. Mm. So it was good for him. Yeah, it was good for him. And then other people are just saying like, hey, man, how come there's no like real main Cantonese actors in this film? Is there's it no famous Cantonese actors. There's no Andy Lau. There are Cantonese actors in it, though. Right, right. But it is about the expat community that yes. is, like, so well-known in it. Yeah, um, no, no, no. Most of the story, so I'll tell you this. I didn't watch the entire series yet, but I watched a couple episodes. And I'll say this. It's an intense show, and I think it's well-made. Now, whether or not you want to politicize it, anything can be politicized. It is about Hong Kong. It is. They do have Cantonese characters, local characters, but you're right that it is centered more around these, this rich, rich expat family, but there are actual Cantonese characters. It's true. Now, does it make Hong Kong look good? Well, her, this is not a spoiler, by the way. The son gets kidnapped, so that's one. The Hapa son. The, the half-Korean, half-white son, I believe, of Brian T. and, and Nicole, Nicole Kidman, Kid which, by the way, I forgot another controversy, Andrew. Nicole Kidman was granted vaccine exemption when they were filming this in 2020 when everybody else had to be quarantined well that's that's on the hong kong government side i can't speak on that but what i will say this is the things that i liked about the show is that i liked how they covered the filipino helpers life there's a lot of filipino maids in hong kong and, and indonesian and indonesian but th they focus on the filipino ones and it delves into their life and their perspective and i thought that was very interesting because this is something that in Hong Kong, if you spend any time in Hong Kong, you know that there is a lot of help out there, right? For all these well-off families and it's- very In the mid-levels. People have a lot of busy lives. It's not just mid-level, even, even in other parts of Hong Kong, there's still just a lot of help and they get Sundays off. So they all hang out to each other, with each other. And I think it's interesting to delve into their life. Nobody, in my opinion, has really delved into their life before. Just tell the story where the kid gets kidnapped. Why does the kid get kidnapped on Le Young Guy in Mong Kong because on Lady the, Street? For summer, I didn't watch the, um, I started the second and third episode. So I think it happened in the first episode where the kid, uh, the maid is not there when the family goes out yeah, to Nicole the market. Nicole Kidman somehow gets mad at the maid yeah. because she's getting too close with her kids. So she feels like she's gonna be the mom, takes the kids out, and her son, who's Hapa, gets kidnapped. Yeah, gets kidnapped. Now, 
Is it likely that a well-off, rich Hoppa kid gets kidnapped in Hong Kong? It is not likely, let me tell you this. But are they even going to take their kid to Leon Kai to begin with? I don't know. I don't know. They're but anyway, Stanley Town. But what are we, we, are we being realistic in every show now? Are we being realistic? So is it a documentary now? But I, no think, I think when freedom? there's so little Western representation filming about the daily lives of of things in Hong Kong, people are a little bit like worried, right? Or or in a place like that doesn't get a lot of attention as much as yeah, they used I mean, to in the nineties. People are worried. They're like, oh, what? Well, everybody is going to think that their kids are going to get kidnapped in Hong Kong. So we need yeah, the tourism money. Yeah, it's true. Hong Kong is not like Mexico, so maybe they don't want like <laughs> that type of connotation. But I guess what I'm saying is, it's. It is an intense show, and I'm not saying it's a show made to make Hong Kong look good, like how Singapore looks good in Crazy Rich Asians. No, it is not glorifying Hong Kong like that. I understand. I, I admit it. It's not. But it's not. I don't think it's making Hong Kong look horrible. Right, you're saying it's not demonizing it. No, either. it's not demonizing Hong Kong, but it is a serious place, and it's letting you know, hey, at the end of the day, Hong Kong is a very safe place. Let's be honest. It's a huge city, but there's still some... You got to worry out. They, worry, they, worry they about. not hooping at Southern Playground in Wansai. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a real city. So you have to watch out for things. Um, people were just saying, man, why is everybody concerned about a work of fiction? It's not a uh, documentary. And someone said, yeah, but if anything, it should teach people that maybe having leash kids on their toddlers is not bad because when you have everybody criticizes parents who put their kids on leashes, but at least your kids don't get kidnapped. Yeah, I do understand why people have leashes for their kids. As weird as that is, because I've seen, like, the crowds, and you have a kid, and you're walking through them, and if you're not carrying them, you kind of need to be, like, you want to be latched onto them somehow. So. Right, right, right. Somebody just said, man, uh, I would play, I, I would have watched it if she didn't skip, uh, skip the quarantine. I hated that. Because, Andrew, there was a lot of uh, crazy things happening during the filming this. Nicole Kidman went back to Australia for two months in the middle of filming because she couldn't deal with it. Like, because there was a lot of restrictions and they just ended up, they ended up finishing the series and now it's coming out three years later. Um, somebody just said, man, it shows Kowloon in a bad light because obviously, Andrew, in um, Hong Kong, there's a split between the island side where yeah. a lot of the expats live. Mid-Levels is there. Yeah. Peak, Stanley Town, Repulse Bay, and then island side, which is viewed as more like crazy. I mean, uh, Kowloon, which is viewed as more crazy, like the BX. Yeah, well, I can't speak on it. I'm not in Hong Kong right now. So, I mean, if, it, listen, if if you're from Hong Kong or you currently live in Hong Kong and you're offended by this series, I'm not going to tell you not to be, okay? That's fine. I mean, just as an Asian guy, I can say that I'm offended by a lot of things that I see. Uh, it, so did you enjoy it as somebody with roots in Hong Kong? It's um, the first American production to pump millions and millions and millions of dollars into something in Hong Kong in quite some time. What'd you think, man? Yeah, I thought it was a well-made show. And if you are interested in that, if we've, if at the end of this video that you've watched us talk about it, you're still interested in the show, you can watch it because you just need an Amazon account, right? So, but I'm not telling every, this is not one of the shows I'm riding for. I'm not saying, oh, everybody should watch this show. I'm just saying, if it sounds interesting, watch an episode. It's, it's a well-made show. It's so funny because that expat world in the mid-levels or the peak or whatever you want to call it, uh, Repulse Bay, it's sort of what makes Hong Kong what it is. But, of course, a lot of the actual, like, Cantonese people are, like, local yeah. Hong Hongers. They don't really, like, love that crowd of people. Yeah. Because yeah, they yeah. act like they run the place. Yeah, no. And but they, they don't treat it with any sort of, like, seriousness. You know how they, they you know, obviously a lot yeah. of the expats, they never learn Cantonese. Exactly. They never no, learn and, I, and I think that you can see that in the film. I don't know if that's the point of the film, but you can see that they are disconnected from the locals, 100%. Right, you said everybody's, what, all the dads they're, are cheating on the yeah, moms. Yeah, they're all disconnected from the, the, you know, it shows the maids, it shows the local HKers, and it shows the rich expats that are non-Chinese. And I'm just saying, like, it kind of does show you a little bit of everything. Yeah, Nobody, my favorite place of, in no, Hong Kong is Lang Kwai Fong. Trust me, it's it is Fong. not glorifying the expat life, I wouldn't say. Right. I wouldn't say it's glorifying it, especially yeah. for the expat women. It's and, definitely and, not glorifying it And I'll tell you this, any them. place that used to be a former British colony, there's still that scene that exists there to this Everywhere. day. Everywhere, Singapore. Singapore. Parts of Malaysia. Yeah, Malaysia is like started. But yeah, neighborhoods but, in Malaysia probably. Um, just a lot of places in Asia that were colonized by European powers, specifically like British yeah. powers. They got this scene still to this day existing, yeah. sort of, sort of vanishing now. Though. Yeah, but but again, uh, having been to Hong Kong several times in my life, I thought it was a interesting show. 
But I don't. Am I going to finish the series? I don't know. You let me know in the comments I, down I, below. I, you know, I would just have preferred like maybe MC Jin or somebody else can pop well, up. Well, you it. know, uh, <laughs> I did not see a Tony Leung or Andy Lau in this. So, you know, I don't know if I want to. Is it really a Hong Kong series? If there is no Andy Lau, Lau Duck Wah. If there is no Lau Duck Wah, how can it be for Hong Kong people? What was more statistically unrealistic? That the kid got kidnapped or that the interracial couple had Brian T and Nicole Kidman? I'm just based off what you see. I don't know. Yeah, I think that probably kid, the kid getting the kid kidnapped, getting kidnapped, kidnapped yeah. is unlikely. But anyways, it does happen. It's a big city. Anyways, guys, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Did you watch the series? Are you interested in the series? How problematic do you think the making of it is? To me, listen, if you find out later down the road that one of your favorite series that that the director of one of your favorite movies was kind of racist, is that going to ruin the movie for you? You let me know. I don't know because. Pardon me, I, that's the, on the Hong Kong government side. I don't know. I didn't make the decisions for, for Nicole Kidman. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of the expats. If you watched it on Amazon Prime in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.